Check, check. We'll start the show in just a couple seconds. I'm the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. It's Saturday. Good morning. I just need a couple more minutes because I'm running late because I don't have any type of program or schedule or I'm just making this up as I go along. So give me another set.
Okay. All right. Good morning. Mike's on. We should be ready to go. Oh, Bong is right here. We'll get, uh, let me start smoking. Um, oh, so sorry, Mass. Sorry, Mass 420. Um, I, uh, I apologize. I get so many people that hassle me. I sometimes I don't necessarily know, uh, when I'm being hassled, but I always like it. I always like when they call me and tell me why I suck. Love that. All right. Well, the deal of the week, and listen, I just had to go. I got this ballast and this CO2 thing. This happens every week. Hell yeah, this happens every week. Um, okay, nope. Des desktop audio. So I got this going. Hey, no sound. Desktop audio. I got... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, troll, troll, troll. Okay. Okay, so I think... Okay, so you guys should have me now, yeah? Alright, so somebody let me know. I'm going to smoke cannabis here. Well, somebody lets me know if my mic's on because I think it's on. Oh, I know that Nano Lux OG. Oh, dude. Give me... Let me know if my mic's on. I think my mic is on. It says my mic is on. Sound good. All right. Dude. I just don't want to go to a headset. I don't want to wear a headset. <coughs> it's fine. Okay. Ah. Okay, so I just wanted to say good morning to everybody. Sorry, Mass420. All right, let's see. Who do we got? We got the UK, Massachusetts, Virginia, class in session. Um, there's the no bong, Afghan joint for breakfast. You know, actually, hang on. Ugh, that bong was so gross. It made the weed bad. I hate that. All right. First and foremost, the focus is on smoking cannabis. Then, if there is time, I will answer questions. Oh, shit, I got to turn on Skype. I got to open up paint. Listen, we've been busy this last week. Like, I have not had time to deal with any of this. Like, check out my store. It is fantastic. It looks great. My average sales have gone up probably 15%. Like, not the total sales, but the average of each sale has gone up because I've got so much more stuff. So much more stuff now. Australia! What's up, Grow Boss? Let's get cooking. Okay, yes, we are going to do the Grow House build. We were talking about Project Grow House. But I couldn't start Project Grow House until I got caught up on everything else. So I, I couldn't, now that the books and the magazines and that stuff's mostly done, I had to go back and take some time and do the store. Oh, North Carolina, Texas, New Mexico. Oh, it's 110 outside the shop. But listen, even here in Vegas, it's easy to cool the air. You just buy the right AC. Okay, let's make sure I've got Skype's not open yet. Let's get Skype open. Welcome back to Skype. Not right now. The number's 84 Grow Boss. I'm the Grow Boss. I write I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And a whole bunch of other books and the No More Grow More cards. And you can find them on you can find them on my website thegrowboss.com along with this cannabis hotline yeah i've been doing so i've been doing two cannabis hotlines a day i mean it sounded great when i first started doing it right i'm like oh no inventory 100 percent profit and then suddenly you get two a day and dude it's a lot of work to do those calls okay but oh good 
like somebody bought the marijuana grow book with $29 shipping so it's 49 bucks and anytime I see 49 bucks I always think somebody bought the 60 minutes Berlin Wow oh no I did not put the preference tab. I did not put the reference tabs on my book yet I have literally been doing this store we brought in 15 G's in the last two weeks almost 15 G's of inventory in the last two weeks we had to re Dude, check this out this is okay okay so if you remember back in the corner it was a bunch of boxes right check that out I've got a it's all uh, it's all got it's got the uh, uh, grid wall back there now and look how neatly that stuff is hung and now check out my okay so that's the thing that does the all the rock wool it's all on one and I'll do a better video of this later but it's I've got all my rock wool all my smart pots all my plastic bags on there and then when you check the rest of the store out I got all the stuff organized now there's there's all my pots and my net pots we've got fans in motion now oh yeah we got all that stuff with trellises and stuff and look at all the stuff on this wall here ah. listen it's a huge amount of work going through the store I mean we rebuilt the shelves we painted them like we dropped uh, something you see that black cloth behind me oh, it's not really cloth I actually just opened up uh, panda paper and lined the whole wall of the store with panda paper from about 10 feet down <laughs> but I had to do the store because the store was silly and people were coming in and no I can't do a bigger store because um, I can't do a bigger store oh I hope we didn't lose mass 420 I apologize sorry mass 420 it really was me I, I thought someone was just busting my balls um, yeah so we put all this stuff into the store painted the shelves it's taken I mean I've been working on it for three weeks we still have to build the shelves above these tents so we can go like check out the tents so we still have to build <clears throat> we still have to build the shelves above these tents so we can stack more stuff but we are going to take out the middle room and we're going to make it a stage because I've lost my stage if I do the store so we had this weird little space in the middle of the store that the owner didn't want me to tear down but nobody cares anymore so we're just gonna tear down the middle thing you know the hydro store is a tough business um, and if you have any questions about cannabis um, you can always call the the number is 84 grow boss which is some sort of numbers on your phone I forget what it is but you can always call 84 grow boss we can talk cannabis if you have questions otherwise I'm just getting warmed up haven't had the chance to smoke pot working on my second cup of coffee just getting the show started got a couple used things on the table because I got a used story for you about the guy who came in weird dude weird dude I love this business okay I'll tell you something I'm very good at knowing what's going to happen next you know how everybody has their skill well I'll tell you I pretty much always know what's going to happen next because the one there's nothing new under the Sun right and so all you have to do is put someone on a trajectory and you can tell what they're gonna do next right I mean if they explode and do something stupid yesterday you should expect them to explode and do something stupid today so I've gotten very good at reading people one it kept me out of trouble in school I was in the principal's office all the time and I'd always say something about his wife or something about his ugly kids or something just to get off track till they get so mad and kick me out that's better than getting suspended so I've learned as a child because I was so much trouble how to read people how to move them how to move them on a track and a target so I always know what people are gonna do next that's why I like being a paramedic nurse you don't know what's gonna happen next I open up the back doors to my ambulance and I get out it could be anything anything okay it's the same way with the hydro store there really are a bunch of whack fucking people that come through my store now on that note I, that doesn't not say more cowball
more cowbell. Ah, oh, dude, who doesn't want more? I need more cowbell. I put my pants on just like everybody else, one leg at a time. But then I'm Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> I love that. I need more cowbell. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, oh, listen, Bar listen, great Nate, is their kids didn't necessarily were ugly. I would just say something to get them off track. Okay. So, 770, hang on one sec. So, let me take this call from 770, and then we'll get more into uh, the story of the used equipment, because I got a lot of good used equipment this week. All right, 770, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, I just got your grow book uh, and equipment guide. I got your other stuff on the mail. First off, thank you for you guys' package. It. My uh, UPS just decided to fold it in half, basically. So, uh, all that packaging helped keep it intact. Uh, that being said, I have a question about trellises. Um, so, I really, really don't want to do any setting up myself, and so I know, well, I, actually, I guess I'm asking, are there any sort of pre-made trellises where you can just attach them to something, or is there a quicker way than having to basically install and create my own? Um, even, even if it's per plan. <clears throat> I, I mean, I think the closest thing you're asking me for is a tomato cage. I mean, the closest thing I can offer you to a trellis would be a tomato cage. Like a pre-made, you okay. just stick it in the pot. Um, see, the thing about a trellis is you're really trying to get the plants as low and as even as possible. It's tough to do a ready-made trellis because, like, you got a 4x4 four four tent. You would have to get something that was 4x4. Four four. And then what happens if your tent was 4x6? And then how would you attach the trellis? Would you have legs on it? Would you hang it from the from the top would you in fact somebody just posted a comment uh why are there two trellises and that's because if you get one bud that grows up past your trellis it'll fall over so the second trellis holds the bud up the weight higher than just the pivot of the branch so you take your branch you turn it up like this into the trellis and now as the branch gets taller it can pivot so you put two trellises to lock it in place but I, I don't, I don't, I couldn't imagine how it would be like an automatic feeder. I don't know how they work because you still have to program it. You still have to determine frequency. I mean, all you can do is program it to feed, but I, I don't know how you could get the, um, the flexibility that you need because you have to, uh, you have to be the one to decide where it's going to go, what, I don't know how you would do that. So if there is, I don't know. And I don't know how you would incorporate it anyway. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was more so me trying to be lazy, but I kind of figured that. I just wanted to know if you knew of anything. But all right. Thanks, man. Right. Lazy grower. First call in the morning. Thanks, dude. 770. Thanks so much. Partly cloudy. Good morning. Ocean grown seeds. Dude, where did I... J Ocean grown is a strain. I knew I just heard it. Sensi seed bag. Serious seeds. There are a lot of seeds out there. Attitude seed bank. Lumberjack. I just use kite string attached to the ceiling fan. Oh, to the ceiling. Oh, feels bad. Oh, okay. I was going to... Woo. Okay. Nirvana seeds, so many seed places. Seed stores are like, seed banks are like hydroponic stores. So many. So many to choose from. There's so much shit and marketing. Look at all the shit on my shelves. Good grief. There are so many nutrients. Listen, anybody can be a nutrient company. Anyway. So I got that we set up three tents behind me. Usually with the customers, I show them like a one, two. I even got this one here with a little tent inside a big tent. And I've got, ah, dude, we set up one tent with a couple of LEDs in it. Oh yeah. One tent has got veg and flower on it. This one has a compact fluorescent in it. This one has a T5. Now granted, they don't have the CMH lights in there and they don't have the 
and the and the LECs, but that's okay because people don't need to see the light apparently. Yeah, I did I did a three thousand dollar setup yesterday, so we'll go over that one later in the in, later in the show. But just giving the idea of a one two three light rotation usually seems to be enough. Uh, all right, nine one six. Good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Hey, Grow Boss. I love your show. Hey, Thank just you. Quick question. Uh, was it a hike? Uh, was it a hike store the other day, and the guy was trying to sell me some psycho nutrients, saying it's a uh, FDA uh, medical grade. I, I'll take your answer off the air. I just want to kind of <laughs> what's your thoughts on that? Medical is that, is that, grade. Is there a medical grade? Is that is that a bunch of crap, or is that uh, is that true? I'll take it off the air. Thanks very much. Keep the show okay. going. Okay, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, I, listen, medical grade is super fucking funny. Hey, 209, hang on one sec. Medical grade psychonutrients, P-S-Y-C-O, psychonutrients, cannabis. I, I want to, oh, cannabis, I spelled it wrong. Um, I still spelled it wrong. Okay, so... A two oh nine. Give me one sec. I want to find psycho nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. So it's P Y C O psycho nutrient. Cha cha. A lot of book. Couple books on it. Um, okay, so let's switch over to Google and do psycho nutrients. Ah, oh, two oh five. You're gonna have to hang on. It's too many phone calls. I'm not that smart with Skype. Mm. God, they just have so many products. They've got super sticky, super sticky. Jesus. I mean, <laughs> Psycho new. Oh, love this picture. I don't know how you stand a chance with this many nutrients. I don't know how many. I don't know how you stand a chance. I, I don't know even know how you keep the cost down of of cannabis with this. So. I, I don't know. It's platinum series because because Dutch Master has gold series. Okay, <laughs> I, I just the shit just drives me fucking nuts, dude. Um, there's just so many products. Um, listen, if you're a big hydro store, I know you got to carry all the products, but but. Again, I, I always lose it, dude. I just always lose it when it comes to uh, when it comes to period. Wait, wait, wait sorry, periodic uh, table nine oh nine. You're gonna have to hang on a sec. Okay, periodic table of elements. Listen, this is these are all the minerals and the shit that goes into uh, bottles of nutrients. I don't know if any of these are medical grade. I don't, I mean, I don't really know what medical grade is. I know um, with those CO2 tanks that we have in the store, it's medical grade because we're putting them in people's houses. But in terms of CO2 tanks, medical grade means, dude, medical grade, medical grade means we certify the tanks every five years because we got a new CO2 delivery guy and all of our tanks were older than five years. So the new guy, oh, you got a medical grade because it's indoors. So we certified like 50 tanks. They fired that fuck. New guy comes in, doesn't give a fuck at all about the tanks. So I just certified 50 tanks at like 15 bucks each for no reason because the next guy doesn't care or doesn't care if it's medical grade. Also, the new guy takes blue and red Pepsi and Coke tanks, which always helps. <clears throat> anyway, in terms of medical grade nutrients, I don't know what that means. Does it mean something? Maybe, but when we look at the labels, and this is the part that always just drives me fucking nuts. When you look at the labels on the in the facilities and dispensaries on the cannabis jars, they don't say medical grade nutrients. They might say a brand of nutrient. Might. They but they never say a light. They might say a brand of nutrient or they might say so and so's secret recipe. There's a lot of things that they can say, but they're not going to tell you PPMs. And frankly, most of the nutrient, most of the facilities use a 1000 powder and a 01010. I don't know if it's medical grade, man. I don't know about that. That seems like that seems like it's reaching. You know what I mean? Medical grade. Anyway, 209. Good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Yo, what's up, Grow Boss? 
Thanks for uh, taking my call. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, um, I got some um about like ten seaweeds under two sets of um of shop lights. Uh, they're uh thirty two watts each, and they're doing good. Like, um, I, I, I lifted them. I lost you there, 209. You've got 10 seedlings under a shop light, 34 watts. Then what? Yeah, and uh, can, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Under uh, there, each set of lights holds two bulbs, uh, 32 watts each. And um, they were, they're growing good, you know, from the beginning. And now they're... Uh, uh, they're going. They're showing like a little yellow, like the one leafer, the one at the bottom. Okay, they're kind of yellow. Sec. Hang on a sec. You don't even have to tell me that yet. Let's go over a couple things first. One, the rule uh -huh. that's already in my head that I'm thinking is today's problem started last week. So you say you have seedlings yeah. and things are going good. So how old are they? How old are your seedlings? Since they made it out the soil, I would say 14 days. Okay, so if today's problem started last week and your plants are two weeks old, then your plants literally at the end of the first week, they started to have a problem. So I just want to be clear before we go any further, your plants have been dying since you started them. Because if they're two weeks old and today's problem started last week, then you had one week with no problem and frankly it's a seedling you don't even need a light so one week doesn't even exist so your plants were never going to make it if they're two weeks old and they already have a problem that's why i tell you guys specifically when you're going to when you start your seeds or your clones whatever you are going, you're not going to use paper towel. You're not going to do any of that nonsense. You're going to put them in the root riot starters and you're going to put one of these two foot lights on top of them and that's it for a month. Now, you're probably going to feed them with some Clonex solution. So, mm -hmm. this is where I'm at. If you do this setup like this, um, I, could, I would have a better opinion for you. But the reality is, you're using the wrong light. And by the wrong light, I mean um, T8s and T12s, we don't use them in hydro stores. I mean, we might light up our store with them, but we don't sell them because, well, they don't put out the right light. And while I always complain about Spectrum, they're not what we use. So you've got a light that I don't have an answer for. Um, you've uh, got two... I also got a T5. What? Should I put, um, I also got a T5, uh, 400 watts. Should I put them under those? Okay, do you see this in the picture? Well, I'm going to start again. Over. I mean, I'm going to start I mean, over. Like, I'm showing you. See, the thing is, you just went from 34 watts to 400. So the answer is no. Well, I'm not going to, yeah. See what I'm saying? Like, but you I asked, wasn't going to. But that wasn't But that wasn't what you said. You said, should I put them under 400? All I'm suggesting is that your starts are generally going to be under here for a month. <clears throat> this light for sure even after three weeks if you transplant them to a red cup you'll still keep them under this light while they root into a red a little solo cup so i'm just suggesting that this path right here where you add three mils of this to a water bottle like you see me do in the great root race oh i have to release the fifth episode of the great root race all right i'll do that this weekend we'll take a look at it today or tomorrow and i'll release the fifth and final episode but I just want to point out that when you watch the Great Root Race, it's one of these lights, it's one of these domes, it's a Root Riot starter tray, and some Clonex solution. Um, I can tell you that I have done this so many times and helped so many growers that there's two ways I can handle this. One is we could try to work out all of the details of your light and your system and what's wrong with your plants. Uh, but the reality is you should use a 24 watts, two foot, one bulb T5 on top of a seven inch Mondi humidity dome with your seeds or your clones started in root riot starter plugs along with 
they would be fed with some clonex solution now I don't want you to I don't want anybody to bitch at me that I'm trying to sell you stuff all I'm suggesting is you're going to need a light you're going to need a dome you're gonna need starter plugs you're gonna need baby food you can buy whatever you want okay but I've sold this stuff to so many customers that what I would suggest is 124 watt t5 on a Monte humidity dome throw in a little green pad um, a little green pad junior in there too okay okay so uh, um say if i get well i'm gonna get the um the root riders how much so, uh because uh the uh, the clone solution the five milliliters per uh liter it raises it up to 370 ppm yeah because i would put five water with that too? but i would put five milliliters in a gallon not a liter oh okay 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 I also tell you that you could just as easily take a water bottle, open up, hang on a sec. I'll just show you, hang on, hang on. So usually what I tell you guys when you water your stuff is this. If you've got your babies in your tray, all you're going to do is take your water bottle, stab a hole in the top with a pen. Boom. So it's got a nice squirt to it. You're going to take a small pipette. You're going to take a small pipette, shake up, the, you know, invert the bottle. You're going to take literally one pipette. You just use this thing. Literally, it's just one pipette. You just use you just use this thing by squeezing this putting this in the clonex solution bottle and then just taking out three mils on this pipette take the three mils you put it inside this and then you just water with it now when we were doing I'll tell you I'll tell you I know you guys asked me about how often you're watering and it's a totally legitimate question even though I'm doing it like this um, it's a totally legitimate question so let me show you because we ran into the same problem doing the great root race so let me show you what we were thinking and what we learned um, okay um. okay so here so here's the great root race hi i'm the grill boss um and in here okay let's see oh so in here i'm literally showing you guys how to let's take it back just a little further just a little further okay so this is baby food and this literally shows you there's three mils you put it into a gallon of water or you'd put three mils into a water bottle you put five mils into a gallon or three mils into a water bottle and there i am just watering it okay interestingly enough this was what we learned when we did 12 trays at first when we started the seeds <coughs> the trays the, the the root riot starter plugs would dry out almost every day if we waited 40 hours to water it was too long however three four weeks later when the plants were looking like this um four weeks we were watering them once every three days in fact by the time it was over and we just already like disassembled everything and set it all aside we had a we had these things in a tray for five days without watering them and the reason we had them the reason we had them in a tray for five days without watering them was because the roots locked in all the moisture they protected themselves so i'm just saying that there's a relationship between the roots using the water how much roots they are there are and how long the water in the bucket stays and it's not what you think it turns out that they trapped the water and by the end of the great root race by like week four and five they were literally needed to be watered every three days so i just want to keep in perspective now you say the tips are yellow but in a plant that's two weeks old that's had a problem for one weeks it's not even a plant a seedling that's two weeks old 
that's had a problem for one of its two weeks. It still probably has the condyline leaves. There is nothing to be known. No, nah, they're already off. So, how many do you have? Just like the one little node at the top. What do you got going? No, nah, they're they're actually pretty big. That's why I kind of feel, uh, they were actually going like health like a healthy seal. You should. That's why I kind of find it kind of weird. Okay. Buy yourself the two foot. The, the two foot single bulb T5, get Clonex solution. Um, if you've already watered with it once at five mils per liter, don't water with it again. So now we don't know if you've overfed or there's too much light because we don't know enough about the light that you're using. So I um, last time uh, in your video, you said the three milliliters per the water bottle and I did that, but okay. it raised, it was at, it was like a, 250 ppm of yeah. the Clonex solution? Yeah, that probably sounds about right. But you got to remember. Yeah, I watered we, with that last time. Okay, when we were doing the uh, great root race like this, though, um, the thing that we were doing was we were watering uh, weeks two, three, and four. But we, I'm sorry, we were feeding weeks two, three, and four. But we were watering almost every day. So let's say that I fed 250, just like I told you. There were six waterings or five waterings after that with 30 ppm ultimate RO water. So I wasn't feeding them very much. Um, at this point, at this point, this is this is the this is the thing that I tell all you guys. There's sort of like an accepted way to do this. We all know what happens if you use this equipment. We know if you use a thousand watt light or a 600 watt light, we, we have to, we know the basic equipment. Once you start bringing in equipment that we don't know, it's tough to certify what's going to happen. Because if you have this light and this nutrient and this and this and this, we sort of already know that one Toyota four-cylinder Camry Prius, what one four-cylinder Toyota is going to drive like the same model four-cylinder, same Toyota. So I'm just suggesting that there's this relationship that we can know what's going to happen based on what we've seen before. The problem is, I haven't seen your light before, and so. What I always ask you guys is, you're going to have to buy a nutrient, you're going to have to buy a dome, you're going to have to buy starter plugs, you're going to have to buy a light. Just buy the lights, do the stuff that's very common. All right, listen, I got a couple more calls. I totally appreciate the call. Um, all right, so in terms of that, it's tough to know when you deviate from the norm what's going to happen. And we could ask about the light, and we could ask about the nutrients, and we could ask about all these things. But frankly, hey, 205, give me one sec. But frankly, you got to turn, uh -huh. your, turn your computer down too. But frankly, it's more difficult for me to try to figure out whatever it was you invented or whatever it was that you're using. It's, it's so much more work to try to figure out what you're doing than it is to just do what everybody that's successful is doing. In fact, I had one of the comments come through on one, 909, come back in a sec. And uh, I had one of the comments come through and, oh, oh, he wanted to know what I thought about LEDs. And I said, I thought they're expensive. They don't really have anything to do with growing cannabis. But if you buy one, it'll grow the same cannabis as every other light, because all cannabis is the same. And he said, I said, he said that, oh, you know, he's going to, uh, he's going to experiment. And I said, why would you want to experiment? Why wouldn't you just grow cannabis? Like every, you know, why would you want to experiment? So he says, oh, well, I'll let you know how the LEDs turn out. And I said, no, thank you. Please don't inform me how a first time grower on LEDs, there is no credibility in anything you have to say, because frankly, even if you knocked it out of the park the first time, you don't know how you did it. And if you did have a problem in the second round, you wouldn't know how to solve it. Why? Because experience is what this is about. So that's why I suggest to this guy, don't, I don't, I'm of zero, I play zero value on a new grower's opinion. Why? Because you actually believe that the light should be 24 inches from the plant like the vendors tell you. So, all right, what can I do for you 205? Good morning. 
Good morning. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I'm in your chat and there, and I was asking a question about, I have a two by three closet, and at the moment I'm running a digital 400 watt high pressure sodium and metal halide set up with a 300 watt metal halide. What I want to do is switch to your T5 setups, but I'm wondering, do you have a good solution for two by three um, that would produce? No. I mean, no, I have a poor solution. Hang on one sec. Let me show you what it is. Hang on. Okay, 909, I've got to call. i got to go over this used equipment and a couple other things. It's going to take a minute. Okay, this is a two-foot T5 with 16 bulbs. So this thing is 16 two-foot bulbs. I also sell a 12-bulb version of this, okay? So when you ask me if there's an answer, it may be this. Now... There are a couple of conditions. So let's go over what they are. Because this is a uh, that's a four bulb. So this is this is the math on the situation. A two-foot bulb is 24 watts and 2,000 lumens. A hang on a sec, let me. Okay, this is page 21. A two foot bulb is 2000 lumens and 24 watts. A four foot bulb is 5000 lumens and 54 watts. So, for twice the electricity, you get two and a half times the light. That's why I tell you when you when you run four foot T5s, it's straight math whether you have two, four, 10 or 20. Each one is 54 watts. You don't get a benefit. Now, with with the old magnetics and and today's digital ballasts if you run a 600 in this particular case a 600 is twice as bright more than twice as bright as a 400 so for 50 percent more electricity you get twice the light the same thing with the four foot eight bulb with twice the electricity you get two and a half times the light so there's a scale of efficiency that happens the problem is you have to think about it in terms of this. This 16 bulb, we're, a, we're an eight bulb T5, four foot eight bulb T5 is 5,000 lumens times eight bulbs, 40,000 lumens. This T5 here, even though it has 16 bulbs, it's 16 times 2,000, which is 32,000. So not only do you have twice the bulbs, you have 20% less light and yet they're still moderately expensive. However, in your space, this 16 bulb T5 is the right answer. And that would, would do is, um, what I'm trying to do is mimic your, uh, your scrog with, you say the one pound in 90 days. I know, I'm not sure that I could get that out of that size of a closet. You can't get it out of this I'm light. Trying to, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yield is not based on closet size. Yield is not based on closet size. Yield is based on light. So this light is 300 watts. It will get you six to eight ounces. That's what you get dry. In, in, in 90 space. days? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, you'll get six to eight. Now, if you had a 400 watt T5 or your 400 watt light, you would get about a half pound. Now, you got 300 watts, mm -hmm. so you're going to get 25% less, which is about six ounces. But your space is 25% less. You have a two by three, and a 400 watt light is meant for a two by four. So you have six square feet instead of eight square feet, and that's 25% less. See what I'm saying? Right. All right, so listen. the closet is the big problem then, basically. No, I, I should try no, to no, uh, no, no, expand. No, no, no. 
No, the closet's not the problem. You're thinking too small. What you need is 21,000 watt lights in your house. That would solve the problem. No, listen, okay. man. This light right here, you will... All right, listen, thanks for the call. Listen, this light right here is fantastic for a small little two by three space. This 16 bulb T5, is it pricey? Yes, not like an LED though. Okay, so before I take another call, I had a couple of things that one I wanted to go over. One, this is the great root race. I'm going to release episode five, the winner's episode. I'll do it after the show today. So this, if you guys want to watch the great root race series, um, this great. So there's the great root race series, eight, five, seven, man, I need a couple minutes. This has just been not, we have just been going today. All right. So every week I try to go over a couple stories, a couple deals, a couple things that come in my store. Okay. So I get this little shady character, right? Uh, uh, looks like uh, Bubbles from, from Trailer Park Boys, but without the glasses. He's got that square Canadian Wisconsin head. <clears throat> Oh, and he's a uh, five, six, little pudgy school teacher, elementary kids comes in and he's got some used equipment. He's going to sell me. He's got some, uh, he's got some Nanolux thousand watt ballasts. I've got them here in the store. You can have them for a hundred bucks each. If you buy more than one, one twenty. if you buy one, then I buy those from him and some hoods and he's got some more stuff. So he comes back next weekend and He's got a trunk full of nutrients. Now, nutrients are a tough thing to buy. One, they're really cheap. I mean, I had a nutrient vendor come in yesterday and tell me that stores make 60% of their money off nutrients. And I was like, what the fuck? I make so much money off lights. It would take me 100 nutrient bottles to equal like one two light rotation with a four 600 watt setup. So nutrients are never the thing I'm looking to sell. So I'm thinking, wow, it's a lot of nutrients first off. So this guy shows up, minivan, pulls up and the backs up. I'm looking, he goes, there's 111 units here. Some are quarts, some are gallons. So I said, really? I'm in for, I'm in for a buck a piece a bottle. Don't care what size, don't care what product is. I'm in a buck a piece. Oh, I asked him what he wanted first, what he was thinking, because I learned that on Pawn Stars, right? So I'm like, what are you thinking? And the guy's like, oh, I'm thinking like 500 bucks. And I said, hang on a sec. The bottles cost me 500 because I'm a store. I mean, $5 each. So I have no desire to give you $5. So I'm at a dollar a bottle. I'm also going to have to throw out 15 of these bottles. So he says, no, he's going to take it all back. So I said, great, perfect. But he's got more stuff. I, I was just going to buy the nutrients just because I wanted the rest of the stuff. Comes back, brings me fans. I don't take the filters because the store is just looking too good to put used filters in here anymore. So I take the fans. Um, he had three CO2 tanks and um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of ballast too. So he had a bunch of Nanolux ballasts. So it was pretty it was pretty sweet. I got all of those things, and so he's like, um, "I'll take the you know how about 150 on the nutrients? We tested all the ballasts. I bought them all. So I said, mm, "No, I'm gonna pass." All right, let's do the hundred. And I said, mm, "No, I'm gonna pass." Why? Because I got to cherry pick what he wanted out of his pile. And then I sent him away. And I told the guy, if I don't buy it, you should throw it away because I'm the last store that's going to buy it. One, I only think there's one other store that buys used. And two, if I don't buy it from you in my, well, two weeks ago, my weak ass store selling used shit, then uh, no one's going to buy it from you. So I got to cherry pick the sweet deal. So now I buy a dozen ballasts or so, Nanolux. Some, this is like a dual 600 with two dimmables on one. So he's, he's, like, he's like choppy writing letters on like a folded up piece of paper. And he's a mess. Like he's got that thick block of hair, but it's like he runs his hand through it. So it's standing straight up and like that wax super cuts. And he's writing this stuff just he's just writing on this it was it was like the back of a receipt that he pulled from his inside of his car that's folded and he's writing on him he's just block letters messy and i'm like, what are you doing and he goes I'm, I'm, I'm keeping track of all the stuff that i sell okay <laughs> okay 
<clears throat> this is how weird the dude is. He's keeping track of the stuff that he sells. Like one, if you had a neat list, like in a spreadsheet at home, you could go home, look at what was in your car, and then what wasn't in your car would disappear. But you probably wouldn't have a crumpled up piece of paper with receipt with scribbles on it if you had a nice spreadsheet at home, right? Because you'd be organized. You would have printed out your spreadsheet, you would have put a check mark next to it, you would have put a dollar figure next to it. So, so he looks at me like I'm stupid. And I was like, you know, what? because I always know what's gonna happen next, right? So you get a whack customer that comes in and they're super fun. I mean, this guy's scribbling. This guy's just got garbage. Like he could, I didn't buy what was left. He could literally drive to the supermarket, throw it in their dumpster and be done with it because nobody else is going to buy canned. I mean, they were huge too. So no one else is going to buy them. And if you were going to dump them on Craigslist, what are you going to do? Sell them for $5 a bottle on Craigslist? I mean, who wants those kind of people at your house at $5 at a time? So I, I just... And then he just goes back to scribbling on his piece of paper for a couple more minutes and thanks me and leaves. It was a lot of ballast. So maybe this guy was buying storage units. Maybe this guy just happened to get something. Maybe it was just, it was a really weird dude. Okay, so I bought all the ballast. So this week I've got Nanolux 600s. I got a couple of dual 600s. You can have it for $125 if you buy the hoods and bulbs for me. And I've got used Hortolux bulbs for 30 bucks, 600 watt Hortolux bulbs for 30 bucks. I've got super sized hoods, new in a wet box because it rained for 130. And, okay. All right, 862, hang on one sec for me. So used Nanolux, dual digital dimmable 600 watts you can have it for 125 if you buy the bulbs and the hoods for me and i've got super sized hoods new in a wet box for 130. okay i also have this titan co2 controller it's not in a complete box i think it's brand new and um uh somehow i just lost the rest of it or something like that maybe but fuck this thing is probably 330 MSRP, 250 on eBay. You can have this thing if you'll get it out of the store for me. Give me 160 on it, the CO2. Now, this is the Atlas II. You can't program it. It is set for a straight 1500 CO, PPM of CO2. So that's what I've got this week. I've got stacks of 1000 watt and 600 watt and dual 600 watt digital dimmable Nanoluxes and I have a bunch of hydro farms and a bunch of, uh, um, oh, Solus Tech ballast that I bought. So I've got like stacks and stacks of this stuff from weird little guy. So listen, you're welcome to come in. You're welcome to get super good deals on ballast. I've got this CO2 thing going on. I'm really trying to like, if you look to the, like the right where the nutrients are, I've got I just want that soil island right there. And we've got like 30 filters in the store because I keep buying trade shows. So I go around and when I go to trade shows, I buy the shit and I ship it back to my store, right? Um, <clears throat> when they come into town, I buy the shit and I drag it over to my store. So we got a lot of filters because I don't sell them as fast as I buy them. And some of the vendors trade me to make videos. So I got stacks of filters and they're a big footprint and they're really tall. So filters, the bigger the filter, the better the deal. I got a $450 filter you can have for 300 bucks. I think it's like 25 bucks over my cost. Brand new in a box that's not even wet. Now what channel are you gonna hear that on? Psh bragging about having a dry box for your equipment. Why? Because it rained so hard and the equipment was outside over the weekend. All right. Anyway, 2 -0. I'm on the call with someone. Good morning. What can I do for you? 857. Am I on a call with someone? Did I lose my mic? Hey, caller. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good morning. Yes, sir. You're on with the grow boss. Good morning. I had, a, I had a question on, on recommendations for T5s. Uh, okay. Do you have any brands or any big ones that you recommend? Okay, there's two ways that you can think about a T5. One is there is a VHO and an HO. So if you're going to look for, if you want it as bright as possible, you're going for the VHO. 
Now, this is that quantum bad boy. Yeah. Then there's the HO. Now, the VHO is 10% brighter, 10% hotter. The HO is a little cooler. It's a little less expensive. So, basically, the, the trade-off is going to be if you can cool it. I see. And then you're buying brand names. If you buy overseas, they're not UL certified. If you spend the extra 65 bucks, you're going to get a UL certified piece of hardware. See what I'm saying? Would you would you recommend VHL for like a short height indoor growth? Uh, no, like an intense, like no taller than three feet? No, because they're brighter. Yeah. And they're hotter. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate All right, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Huh? A313. Did I catch you? You're on at the Grow Boss. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you're on Hello? at the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Yeah, I had a question about um, light and summer growing. Kind okay. of heat issue. Yeah, I bet. Um, My veg room, I don't have a. a um, AC in it right now, right? And we're in the dog days of summer, and I have a thousand watt HPS, and I'm five weeks in the veg, and I turn it down from 750 to 500, and I was wondering how much of an effect is that going to have, you know, on my plants? 33%. 250. So is, should I not? 250 is one third of 250 is one third of 750 therefore if you get a pound from a 600 and a pound and a half from a thousand you would get a pound and a quarter from a 750 you turned it down to 500 you should get 12 14 ounces okay so i mean I'm, it's not affecting any health issues as far as my plant i don't no, care about the yield i'm like just making sure no, yield, ba okay. yield is based on light. Quality is based on grower talent. Thanks so much for the call. But the reality is, hey, 909, hang on one sec. The reality is, is if you don't okay. know how to grow and, and you kill your plants and you overwater and you overfeed and you put your light too close, it doesn't matter what light you had. It didn't matter what nutrients you used. The reality is you got to get everything right for this to go right, right? Bah. 909, you've been so patient calling me all morning. What can I do for you? How you doing, sir? Good morning. Hello. Yes. Hey, what are you thinking? Hey, um, I I have a two by four scrub going on, but um, I guess the main thing is I uh, I'm just adding um, and according to your book, you said to go ahead and use the um the 15 tab timer. Now, is that just going to be on 15 minutes for each hour? What are we talking about? What are you turning on? CO2. Oh, okay. The tank. Yes. So you've got a CO2 tank, 20-pound CO2 tank with a tab timer. Um, yes. So it's 15 on, 15 off. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. 15 on, 15 off. Okay. For okay. the whole 12 hours. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, also, <clears throat> where where am I putting the PSI at? Pretty much anywhere. If you've got a fan moving air around, doesn't matter where you put it. One, you're not venting, so it's going to stay in the area. Two, you got a fan, so it's going to circulate it. So you're golden. All you have to do is put it anywhere. The question you should be asking me is you haven't asked yet. What's the question you should be asking me? And as far as what, the CO2? Yeah, you should be asking me how much CO2. Correct. See, if you had a CO2 monitor like this, ah, you're going to make me take it out of the box. If you had a CO2 monitor like this Atlas 2, hang on.
this Atlas II that you can get for 160 from me. See, this is why I need a stage. So I can just walk into my store. Okay, so you have a tab timer. This, if you have, you know, one of these for 160, you would take your, your regulator, <clears throat> you plug it into the back, and I don't care if you plug it into this or you plug it into a tab timer. Hang on. Might as well get a tab timer. <laughs> I, I had one of those, but I no longer have it. So all I have is the tab timer for the mo at the moment. That's okay. I got you. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about the tab timer. We got just enough time to do this call before I got to open my store. It's a tab timer. There are four tabs per hour, 15 minutes, so there's 24 hours, so there's 96 tabs. What I suggest that you guys do in terms of CO2 is there'll be 12 hours where there's CO2 on and 12 hours where it's off because plants don't use CO2 at night because they're not photosynthesizing. So you'll, there's a little arrow. There's a little arrow right here. So let's just say like right now it is 10 a.m. So boom, I set the timer to 10 a.m. and then I plug it in. Okay, so from 10A to 10P, from 10A to 10P, I want every 15 minutes. So I would turn on every other tab for 12 hours like this. Bah. So I would turn on every other tab like this. Now, there's a switch on the side. If you turn it to on, it's always going to be on. If you turn it to timer, it's going to make the timer work. And the trick about the switch is, if you look right, hang on. If you look right in, if you look right in, okay, if you look right there, ah, you're never gonna see it. If you look right there, there's a little white thing little white tab and when it goes up the timer turns on and when it goes down the timer turns off so you watch it and it's off it's off it's off it's off it's off boom it's on you can hear it go on you can hear it go off you can hear it go on you can hear it go off so you'll set this tab timer and this your regulator you still need a regulator because the tanks under pressure your regulator will plug into the tab timer You'll plug your tab timer into the wall and every 15 minutes the regulator will open up because once the timer gets power, it sends power to the regulator. The electronic get valve pulls the stop down and lets the gas flow based on the rate that you set your regulator to in terms of this dial right here. So this PSI reads the tank and I will tell you, it is not accurate because the tank is filled with liquid. So you're only measuring the gas. That's why nitrous has bottle warmers. So you turn this based on how much light you have and where you are in flower. For instance, if you have a thousand watt light, it's a half PSI per thousand for the first two weeks. It's one PSI per thousand for the next two weeks. And just like nutrients, it's one and a half PSI per thousand for the last four weeks. And that's about as close as you can get with the tab timer. You are shooting for about 1500 ppm CO2 in the room and 1500 ppm CO2 feels like this. You might get a little bit of after working for 10 minutes, you might get a little bit of sweat come down, but you will feel the atmosphere change at 1500. Now that's this, but if you come in and you want my store and you want this new I, I think maybe it's new. I don't think it's used. It looks so good. CO2 monitor, this sets it at 1500. So when, it, when the CO2 in the room falls down to 13 or 1350 or something, this thing plugs in the wall. This turns this on, powers this, and opens up the tank in the exact same way. Now, when you use one of these, frankly, you could turn, your, you could turn this up to... 15 psi it would just be on for three seconds you could turn it to one and a half psi and it might be on for several minutes the reality is once the room's at 1500 it just shuts this off and it doesn't matter how fast you get to 1500 just that 1500 yeah. is the max where the plant can go all right 
Correct, correct. One more, one more question. I've been, I've been following your lead as far as um, turning up the lights and um, in stages. So I have a 600 dimmable ballast that's on four, 450, or it's about 75 right now, 75 percent. That's fine. And I'm on. Uh, I'm about to start week five. Should I crank it up to the 600 now? Okay, it's a loaded question because I haven't seen your plants. Let me ask you, do you have a 4x4 four four canopy 18 inches deep full of healthy plants? It's a 2x4 it's a and it's, a, it's about no. almost then a no. foot. Then no. Then no. Leave it at the 4 or the 75%. I would the say rest so. of the way? I would say so. Let me... I have a picture that I'll put up for you. Um, let me see if I, I think I have a picture. Um, yes. Okay. So, um, let's see. So it's one of the guys, one of my listeners, geez, I forgot who it was. I was totally gonna, I was totally gonna give a shout out to my listener to, fuck totally disrespectful of me to forget who sent this to me so i'm going to stop right now <clears throat> paul i just wanted to say thank you so much paul for the pictures all right so here is page 49 in the grow book thank you paul page 49 in the grow book a 600 watt light requires a four by four space 18 inches deep when you go from 450 to 600 it requires a space if you otherwise i mean a 600 watt light is a pound if if you're trying to grow a pound i mean I, this is it's just straight math if this is the space required to grow a pound how would you intend to do a pound in half the space now the only way you could do a pound in half the space would be is if you if you look very closely if you look in the book what i have is this grid here that shows you volume see if you wanted to grow a pound in a 400 watt space you would have to grow four foot buds so if you're in a two by four space at 450 your buds should be three and a half three three and a half feet long and they'll finish four feet long the problem is a 951 i appreciate the the call but i won't be able to get to you today so my observation here is if you you need if you want a 600 watt light you need 32 cubic feet of canopy that's four by four two feet deep you're in a two by four space two by four two feet deep is 16 square feet 857 i appreciate the call can't get to you today so you're going to need two by four four feet deep but cannabis doesn't grow in like that indoors you only really grow two foot arms for instance you look at this picture and um this one i, I always show you guys same picture so here's the picture eight five seven i won't i'm not going to get to you tonight today you look at these buds listen you can't grow four foot arms indoors so all right, listen, I appreciate the call. I'm going to have a customer here in a sec. All right, I'm the grow boss, and all I'm saying is that when it comes to growing cannabis, I don't care which equipment you buy. If you don't know how to use it, you're going to fail. And if you don't know how to grow, why are you buying the most expensive, extensive, highest tech equipment out there? Your first motorcycle isn't, a, you know what I mean? It's not a crotch rocket. You get a dirt bike. Lay it down on its side. Who cares? Bust a few handlebars. Take off a few handbrakes you know what i mean so i'm just suggesting that the important thing that you need to know is that i've got a brand new i'm pretty sure co2 controller titan right here for 160 and i've got nanolux and 510 i don't have time to take your call i appreciate it though let's do this tomorrow and nanolux and solus text ballots because i just happen to get sick deals on them and there really is a difference between a high quality ballast and a low quality ballast other than the price there really is a quality difference so if you guys have any questions today's not the day 812 i apologize but i'm not gonna be able to get your call today because i'm gonna have to open up my store soon my store looks so good you're jealous of my store.
Ah, look at all the shit. You should see what's in the back. Like we haven't even right sized the store yet. All we did was fix it. So the front looks right and everything's going in the back. But we are going to, we are going to, uh, God, that customer that sold me all those ballasts was so funny with his little receipt paperwork. Everybody has their little quirks. I have mine. I don't mean it like that. It's just funny. You know, this is a funny little quirk. That's all. No disrespect. But it was funny. Ah, it's funny because it's anonymous. Okay. <laughs> I guess what we're going to do is just get high for the last few minutes of our show. I really don't know what else. I really don't know if I have anything else to impress you with today. Um, grow church tomorrow. Barnes is back. I'm hoping to get on some Barnes is back pictures tomorrow. And yes, I would like to talk about Project Grow House. <laughs> but first I want to look at how awesome my store is. Oh. I got to tell you, my store felt like the Goodwill store. Hmm. It's driving me friggin' nuts. Oh, yeah. We brought in so much stuff. I'm so pleased. 812. Let's try this again tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, my God. That bud is so harsh. And the bong is so dirty. Oh my God. I just hate the bong. It's so dirty. Oh, I did go and I bought another half dozen of these things. Yeah, because I broke all the other ones. Hey, CO2. I sold that Blue Lab meter for 120. I think I still have the HANA, but I couldn't find it for this show for 90. And then, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't, I really don't have anything else for you today. I mean, I suppose I could play a little bit of that music you guys are tired of, and I'm tired of too. But I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. The show did pretty good today. It was the most people ever for a Saturday. Now remember, we do this tomorrow for two hours because the store opens at 11 tomorrow. Um, it'll be nice when I have like a little space because then I could go over more used equipment and we could go over more funny stories. And 812, you know what? No, I'm not even going to do it. 812, well, let's do this tomorrow. I just need to smoke cannabis and wait till a customer comes to the store. These are the three light rotations behind me. The store is looking super good. I got so much inventory in the store. I'm going to be going to the Portland show soon. Oh, I am super excited. The uh, Portland show. Um, uh, so we got, uh, we've got, let's see, vendor. We've got the, oh uh, yeah. So, this okay so this was a private video just for the vendors and i'm you guys probably don't care but but this is what i'm taking to the portland show that's the booth that's the backdrop where i'm going um it goes over like like all the cards that i have like all the stuff that we're taking to the show and the kits and the grow books yeah, so that's all that stuff we put together. That's uh, that's in like a couple of weeks here. I get to go out to Portland. It's sweet because in the whole show, I'll probably be the only vendor that shows up paid. Like, it's, it, I didn't make money going to the show. So the vendors pay me to do all this stuff. And I paid too. But, I mean, there's nobody that can, you know, my size booth, like a you know a 10 by 10, that has so much printed and material and is organized for a show. That shit's super expensive. So I'm excited to go and see how it turns out. And if it flops, hell, I'll tell you about that too. I'm not going to hide it. But you can come and, I mean, it's always weird when I say it, but you can come and meet the grow boss. That's always creepy when I say that. Come and meet the grow boss. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm, like, dude, D-list. <laughs> <coughs> I 
I can't wait till one day when I can scream at a cop. Do you know who I am? Yeah, right. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, let me start ending the show. Let me start thanking people. Grow, bud. Thanks so much. PC grows. I hate the music too. I'm over it. Deals of the day. Stall and balling. So what do we got? We got stall and balling. That's when you start growing in the first 90 days when your plants are small. You really just got to wait. I mean, plants are five months old when they finish. It's a real patient thing. What do we got? We got OCD. Optimal crop disease. That's where you guys think way too hard about this right oh, i'm optimal i have no idea how to grow but i'm gonna set up the best garden ever don't worry about growing the cannabis i'm just gonna build some shit we got the builders who are gonna build some shit even though they don't know how to grow and you can just buy a tent for oh i was gonna tell you about 3g that came in and bought that setup yesterday we did a three light rotation three thousand watts co2 tank um ac light movers two four by eights in flower a five by five in veg Mm. I was going to go over that today. Um, look. This guy's get yourself an intern. Ah, oh. Cypherbus. Sorry. Sorry you're sad. No shit. Clean that too. Knock it out. But where's Ralph? Oh, I know. Ralph's behind the counter sleeping. Um, yeah, I'm almost just going to sit here and smoke cannabis until you all get off my channel. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm done. I'm going to go open up my hydro store. I will see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. There was a lot of people waiting on calls today. I want to thank everybody that was here today. Listen, I totally appreciate the fact that you guys, I'm going to have to go, that you guys watch the show. You guys are super awesome. I got to go sell some shit to customers. As always, I appreciate it, and I respect you guys. Thank you.